Hello everyone, let's try to be a cheat code ninja today. In this problem, we are given an array representing the position of stones in increasing order. There is a frog which is at the first stone and it wants to travel to the last stone and then return back to the first stone. It is given that it can jump to any stone at most once. The length of the jump is the absolute difference between the position of the two stones. And the cost of any path will be the maximum jump distance that the frog has to make among all the jumps in the path. We have to find the minimum cost of a path for that frog. Let's look at the example given. The frog which is initially at position 0 jumps to the stone at position 5. The distance of this jump will be 5. Now this stone will not be available anymore. The frog will now jump to the stone at position 6. The jump distance will be 1. Now this stone won't be available anymore. Now it will jump to the stone at position 7. Even this distance will be 1. Now the frog has reached the last stone and he has to go back to the position 0. The stones at position 5 and 6 are not available anymore for jumping. So the frog will jump to the stone at position 2. This distance will be 5. And finally he will go back to stone 0. In all of these jumps, the maximum jump distance that the frog had made was of length 5. So the cost of the path is 5. Let's try to come up with an intuitive solution for this. Let's take a very simple example in which there are only two stones. The frog is initially at stone 0 and it has to jump at the stone at position 10. In this case the frog has no choice but to jump end to end on both its forward and backward journey. The jump distance would be 10. So the cost of the path would be 10. Ideally, the frog would want that there are multiple stones in the path so that it could use it to minimize the maximum jump distance. Let's see what happens when there is one stone between the start and the end positions. The frog will still be at position 0 and it has to reach position 10. In this case, the position between the first and the second stone will be 3 and the distance between the second and the last stone will be 7. So ideally, to minimize our jump distance, we would want to use that middle stone. Let's see how the path would look. The frog will jump from position 0 to position 3. The jump distance would be 3. And then it would jump from position 3 to 10. This jump distance would be 7. One thing to note over here is that the middle stone cannot be used anymore. So we cannot make a stop over here in our return journey. So the only possible way to go back would be to jump directly from 10 to 0. This jump distance would be 10 and it will be the cost of the path. So adding an extra stone in the middle wasn't of any help to us. So in the case of 3 stones, in either one of our forward or backward journey, we have to make a jump from end to end. As the middle stone is not helping to minimize our cost, we can consider it to be invisible. Let's see the case when we have 4 stones in the path. Even here it does not make sense to jump directly from 0 to 10. So we'll use one of the intermediary stones. The distance between 3 and 10 is 7 and the distance between 4 and 10 is 6. So it makes sense to jump from 4 to 10 rather than 3 to 10. Let's see how that looks. We'll jump from 0 to 4 with the distance 4 and now we'll jump from 4 to 10 with the distance 6. One thing to note over here is that 4 won't be available in the backward journey. From 10, it doesn't make sense to jump directly to 0, so we'll use stone 3. This jump distance would be 7, and since this is the maximum jump distance in the path, it would be our cost of the path. So you could start noticing a pattern over here when we just consider 3 stones in a group. For example, in the first group, with stones 0, 3, and 4, in either one of the forward or the backward journeys, we cannot use the middle stone to minimize our jump distance and we have to jump the full distance between these two. Similarly, in our next group, we can use the stone 4 only once, so we'll have to make a full jump from end to end. Let's see how we can use this approach with the help of a full example. Let's initialize our result to be 0 and as we make jumps, we'll maximize our result. When we consider the first groups of stones 0, 3 and 4, to minimize our jump distance, let's say we jump from 0 to 3. In our return journey, we have to jump from 4 to 0. 
this is because this is better than jumping directly from 10 to 0. And if we jump from 0 to 4 and in our return journey jump from 3 to 0, even in this case we have to jump a distance of 4. So either ways we have to make a jump of length 4. Since this will be the maximum distance we have seen so far, we'll update our answer. Moving on, we'll try to use stone 10 as one of the stones in our path. There are two ways we can reach it, either from stone 3 or stone 4. There is no point looking at further previous stones as the distance would be too large. So if we jump from 3 to 10, the distance would be 7 and our return journey would be this. And if we try to shorten the jump distance of 7 by jumping from 4 to 10, in our return journey we will have to jump from 10 to 3. So in either case, there has to be at least one jump between these two alternate stones. So 7 is the maximum length we have had to jump so far, we'll update our answer. Similarly for stone 20, if we directly jump there from 10, in our return journey we would have to jump from 20 to 4. The distance would be 16. And if we jump to 20 from 4, the distance would be 16 anyways. So in either case, there has to be a jump between these two alternate stones. We'll update our answer to 16. This is one of the paths that we can take. 16 will be the maximum jump distance and hence it will be our answer. To minimize the maximum jump distance, there will be a jump between each pair of alternate stones. So to find our answer, we can go through all the pairs of alternate stones and find the maximum distance between them. The time complexity of this would be O of n because we have to go through the stones only once. And the space complexity would be constant because we have to maintain the maximum distance we have seen so far. Let's implement our solution. Let's keep a variable to store the number of stones. Let's handle the case when there are only two stones. In this case, we have no alternate pairs. And the distance we'll have to jump will be the position of the last stone. We'll initialize a variable to keep track of the maximum alternate distance we have seen so far to be zero. Since we have to compare two alternate stones, the difference in their indices would be two. So we'll go through all the stones from the zeroth stone to the third last stone. And for each stone, we have to find its distance from the next alternate stone, which will be at i plus two index. And if this distance is the maximum we have seen so far, we'll update our answer. Once we have gone through all the alternate pairs, we can return our answer. Let's submit our solution. As you can see, our solution is accepted. If you thought this video was helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more such content. Thanks for watching.